911 laws don't always make sense. That's coming up next in the 911 Doc Podcast, episode 240, recorded Monday, April 6th, 2015, right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. You're listening to the Avaya Podcast Network. Now, here's your host, Mark Fletcher. When it comes to multi-line telephone system, or MLTS 911 compliance, the very first question that everyone asks is, what is the law? IT administrators worry about the liability they expose themselves and their company to by not having their MLTS PBX designed properly and in accordance with current public safety standards. Now, when you seek out the laws that are applicable in the United States that specifically apply to MLTS PBX, you'll discover a couple of very disturbing phenomena. The first is less than half of the states even have legislation pertaining to MLTS PBX systems. And secondly, the states that do are far from being consistent in language and interpretation of the requirements. Now, as a member of NINA, the National Emergency Number Association, ENA, the European Emergency Number Association, APCO, the Association for Public Safety Communications Officials, both internationally and in Britain, Avaya prides itself on participating in policy workgroup and task force initiatives designed to educate legislators on best practices for building functional, operationally deployed and open interface systems that are vendor agnostic and are in the best interests of the industry and the end user that we're trying to protect. Now, unfortunately, despite our attempts, specific language squeezes through the various vetting processes that exist, and ultimately things get published as a standard or as best practice that shouldn't be. Now, in most cases, this occurs because of the lack of participation on a particular committee, or the issue is raised so late in the game that votes are cast without the public's best interest in mind. The National Fire Prevention Association produces a document known as NFPA 1221. Now, while this may mean very little to most of you, it's actually a document that's well-respected and used by many inspectors across the U.S. Unfortunately, despite our attempt to highlight several severe deficiencies in a recent emergency amendment that was circulated, the modifications were approved for inclusion in the 2016 edition of this document. NFPA 1221 Standards for the Installation, Maintenance, and Use of Emergency Services Communication Systems. Every MLTS shall be designed to allow any extension to dial 911 without the need to dial any digit to obtain a dial tone. Now, while we completely agree with that telephone Jews make outgoing calls, absolutely have to have that functionality, the language in the legislation needs to address hotline telephones, similar to those found at airports, designed to reach car rental agencies or hotel concierge services. The way this language is written, it actually makes these types of phones illegal, and that's not good. Number two, the MLTS must be programmed to allow a user to dial 911 without first having to dial 9 or any other number to reach the public switch telephone network. For example, 9911 is not permissible. Now, once again, poor language, as this actually complicates the problem instead of correcting it. There's no issue with the user being able to dial 9911 as long as the call goes through properly and reaches 911 services. And you can dial 911 without an access code. I'm not sure what they were trying to accomplish there. Number three, the MLTS shall out pulse or signal to the public switch telephone network with a dialable number that when dialed will reach the original 911 caller. Now, this is a great example of proposed legislation that sounds like it's a great idea, but in fact complicates the issue. And while this is certainly an option, to codify and mandate it is absolutely a mistake, as it doesn't address the ability to provide a callback number that terminates at a centrally located answer position, such as a front desk in a hotel who would be aware of the emergency call and then able to coordinate the emergency response with more information and doing so at no additional cost. The other issue is that this functionality would require a dedicated direct inward dial or DID telephone number at each particular station. That's the only way you can dial a device directly. And it also requires a PS Alley record to be established and maintained at an additional monthly expense by the MLTS PBX operator. Now, based on these facts alone, the proposed legislation increases significantly the month-to-month operating cost of the MLTS PBX by now legislatively requiring this functionality. Number four, the dialable number is used by the public safety answer point to call the 911 caller back in the event more information is needed or the call is dropped before sufficient information is obtained to initiate a dispatch. 
Once again, the problem I have with this is that it requires the call to go back to the original caller, when a central answering position is more than capable of providing the required level of detail, especially when it's required that that front desk is made aware of the event. So the problem we're trying to solve here is being solved in an extremely inefficient manner while requiring additional outside services when in fact they're not needed. In our reply comments, Avaya noted that when a call is placed to 911 from any device by anyone, there's a reasonable expectation that the person reaching out for emergency services will in fact be connected with the emergency services personnel. We pointed out that unfortunate tragedies such as the death of Carrie Hunt still haunt the news, as do cases of private institutions taking 911 response into their own hands without any guidance or legislative penalty. We believe that basic 911 functionality, that includes the direct access to 911 with and without an access code, on site notification that a 911 call has been placed, as well as the prohibition of answering your own 911 calls with internal staff, unless they're trained and authorized to do so, are the primary tenants that should be included from a regulatory and legislative perspective. It's really unfortunate when you see vendors position themselves on committees and then introduce language that mandates the usage of their product especially when the problem can be solved through other means that are often built into the MLTS PBX core functionality. And this is the point we made with FCC Commissioner Ajit Pai when we brought up the Carries Law legislation. So not only does this proposed NFPA language fail to solve the dilemma, it actually threatens to impose severe financial burdens on businesses by requiring additional external services that carry a month-to-month -month operational charge, as well as DID telephone service. The National Fire Prevention Association can be reached at www.nfpa.org, or you can write them at 1 Battery March Park, Quincy, Massachusetts, 02169, or by phone at 617 Seven seven zero three thousand. For the Avaya Podcast Network, this is Fletch. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. The preceding podcast has been brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. I'm Spider Harrison, the official voice dude of APN. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Avaya underscore APN and check us out on the web at avaya.com slash APN.